Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And Bazing Zhang, look who we got in the room with us. Hey guys. <laughs> uh, this is Finian McManus, um, concept artist behind movies like, help me out here, Avatar 2, Jungle Cruise, Solo, Rogue One. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, give me the more, give, give me the others. Oh man, uh, Ad Astra should be coming out soon next year. Lion King, uh, Transformers, been on a couple other ones, but just a small part in all these. Amazing. Dude, super, super, super cool. And we're so happy to have you on here. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, yeah. man, we're... Art we're, Trooper says a legend. <laughs> no. <laughs> a, a legend indeed. A legend before before, uh, before 25, right? How old are you? I'm 24. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, don't, don't, uh, don't let that um, uh, deflate you if you're over 25 like me. Um, there's still, you know, you, you've put in an insane amount of work. I remember hearing you talk um, overseas and you, <laughs> you, you talked about the amount of time in. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you, there was one little bit where you talked about, you know, I, I forget the number, it was like 50 paintings in a week Oh or man, something. yeah, that was crazy. There's one project we had in school, uh, my mentor John Park assigned us literally 50 paintings in one week. I learned the most from that I think I ever have in my life. 50 paintings 50 in a paintings single week. in a week, yeah. <laughs> and how do you make decisions at that speed? Uh, you you have to. You, you're kind of forced. You're put in a creative zone where the stress makes you make those decisions. And you come up with creative solutions because you're put under that pressure. So I had a timer that I literally set to an hour, and I would never go over that timer. I would try to finish under that timer for every painting. Uh, so in that period of time, I had to make every decision as fast as I could. Yeah. Wow, I love that. How, how has that helped you in your professional career? Oh, ton. It's helped tons because on a, on a daily basis as a concept artist, you need to make those decisions just as fast as I was back then, if not faster. You have to be on with the production, be thinking about what the director wants, what the production designer wants, what your art director wants, all at the same time. And you have to make those decisions very, very quickly. Uh, but it's, it's an incredibly fun and amazing place to be just surrounded by those other artists that are also performing at their peak levels. That's amazing, and, and one of the things that we know has, has, has kind of helped you move fast and what you're kind of on the cutting edge of right now is that you've been using VR as a tool for concept art. Absolutely. VR has been one of the most helpful tools for artists in our generation. In fact, we're on, I, I believe, and a lot of other people have said it, the, the start of a new era of design where we're at the start of a, of a completely new piece of technology that no one uh, has really uh, come to understand the full potential of. Like we're just breaking the ground on what VR can be. And on a daily basis, I use VR to ideate, to do drawing, sketches, all sorts of different things. Everything from architecture to character design to creature design, it can handle all of it. Uh, and it's something where because you're immersed in, in the surrounding space, you can think not only as a designer, but as a, a someone in your audience who's viewing the object you're creating. Mm. So it immediately uh, kind of opens up your senses from uh, being restricted behind a screen to being inside the world you're creating. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's fun. Well, I'm, I'm really excited to see to see what you build today. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what are you building today? Yeah, so today I thought I'd do a cityscape. Uh, I've downloaded or I've, I've uh, bought the, the packs for uh, Utopia, I think, is the one I said on the end. I was going to do industrial or utopia, but I think utopia would work great. And uh, I'm using the program Oculus Medium, which is a fantastic program. Uh, it's free when you get an Oculus, and it's actually the first program I used with VR, and I've stuck with it a lot. There's a bunch of all their amazing programs out there, but today I'll be using that to sculpt with. Amazing. And if, if y'all don't know, Oculus is the, the headset that Finn's mm -hmm. got on his head, oh, yep. which is um, Facebook's head mounted device. And uh, sensors right here, these are these weird black things. <laughs> so that's picking up basically uh, all the hand movements I'm making, everything around this vicinity. I, can, I could actually stand up right now and sculpt while I'm standing, but uh, it's very comfortable sitting like this. So I'm <laughs> here. And you're using the touch, <laughs> Oculus yes. Touch? Yeah, so I'm using the touch controller, so these give you like a full range of motion. Uh, you have a ton of different triggers you can use. And you'll see me, I'll be, I'll be using all of these buttons and controls when we're in the program. But honestly, even if it looks complicated, for a beginner to get into this is very, very quick. Within a couple hours, you can know all the tools and exactly what you're doing. A couple hours? Yeah, so a couple hours. If you picked up an Oculus today, yeah. 
you, yeah, within a you day, can learn it. You can learn it within a day. I mean, I teach workshops where people go from uh, the beginning of the day with no experience to within two hours, they have a full environment design that they're happy with Amazing. that they could render. So uh, that's just how easy sculpting in VR makes it. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's let's dive in. Yeah, let's, let's jump in. in. We keep All jumping, right. Uh, uh, while you're while you're in the space, but we'll be watching here. <laughs> I'll put this on. Let me know when uh, we have the feet up. Yeah, we got it. Okay, great. So we're now in the VR space. Um, you can see I can just freely sculpt. Right now I have a sphere on. Um, and there's in reality, there's a ton of different tools we can use that are available to us. Uh, if I open my panel here, I have squares, a lot of primitives we can use. But in addition to that, we have the access to tons of other you know, skeletons, pieces of architecture, geometry, like I'm, I'm taking a T-Rex skull right now. You can see when I stamp it, it creates the full skull, but I can also twist it in space and create really interesting abstract geometry and forms with it. Um, so I'm gonna undo all this and I'll start off uh, creating a cityscape with our uh, Utopia pack from Kitbash 3D. So you see, I've, I've downloaded all the assets right here from the pack and I can just collect one and just immediately, you know, this is a structure, but I can use it as a ground plane and start sculpting things out with it. And uh, really, this is what makes, uh, you know, VR so enticing and easy to use is that you can literally start with any tool and not even really have a full grasp on the program yet and just start building something with it. Like, I'm probably going to delete parts of this later, but you can see how easy it is to just start layering things on. I'm going, to, I'm going to switch to a road right now. Start pushing some forms here. And, you know, we could consider this a ground plane, but I'm going to be adding more and more structures to it as we go. So right now, um, you know, I'll define a focal point. And uh, speaking of, you know, concept art terms, a focal point is generally something that you want a player or viewer to look at. So I'm going to be creating like a central structure here that uh, will serve as, you know, the main source of attention for people when they look at this image. Super cool. Is this sculpting feature that you're using, is that something unique to Medium? Uh, you know, there are some parts of it that are. Uh, Medium has the stamp feature, which I'm using right now. And that I don't think any other program has replicated because it, like for instance, there's this uh, spherical miniature city that you guys had designed earlier. And just using this stamp tool, I'm able to instantly create, you know, tons of little cities from this one tool. And that's something that I don't, th I think other programs can do it, but uh, the way Medium handles it is, is just very fast. And uh, you wouldn't need to create, it's to spend a lot of time developing complex geometry. You can kind of like jump right into it and it'll instantly get, get very detailed for you. And do you use that a lot to just make stamps? To just stamp Absolutely, stamp I make I make a bunch of my own stamps. Um, in addition to using you know things from Kitbash and using things from other sites, I make a ton of my own stamps, uh, and it kind of functions as a library. Like as you design more and more, uh, you have more stamps you can use, and you're almost creating a you know your own little Kitbash uh, from your pieces that you've designed over time. It's like having a stencil kit. Pretty much, yeah. It's it's awesome like that. It's so intuitive watching this in VR. You know, it's it's the most like like playing with toys. I literally, you, you said something great earlier, Banks, where you're talking about uh, the Legos, mm -hmm. and I feel exactly like that. I feel like I'm I'm back in my childhood sculpting with Lego kits, but I can do it at a much faster rate than I could as a kid. Mm -hmm. It's like I have every single set I would ever want available to me. And I'm just kind of choosing and, and picking what sets I want to use. And they're just instantaneously appearing. We got a question uh, from Dilated Perspective. He says, oh, cool. Uh, what you're making, can this be exported back out as an OBJ or an FBX? Oh, abso absolutely. I, I, you know, often I'll take things from here and uh, then re-sculpt parts of them and say ZBrush or 3D Coat or Decimate. Uh, I always uh, bring them to Cinema 4D for rendering in the end. Um, so that's where I do my rendering. But yes, it's, it's very easy to take them out of this program and then 
uh, you know, do that to, to make basically detail them or sculpt over them in, in another in another way. Amazing. Yeah. And how, how would you use this in production on on one of the movies you worked on? Yes. Yeah, so in production, um, the probably the the fastest and easiest way I could explain that is that you can use it during all phases. The sketch phase, which is I guess more compared to what I'm doing right now, where I'm actually making a full cityscape. Um, you can sketch things extremely easily. And that's one thing that uh, directors and production designers like to see, is they like to see a lot of sketches to see where you want to take an image. Um, and with VR, that becomes extremely easy because you can, you can create so many different designs so quickly. Like, I've only been working on this for, you know, a couple minutes, and already I have kind of a base shape language, a base idea of where I want to go with this. Um, so imagine if I were to call this up and say, okay, hey, that's, you know, my first concept. That's where we start. And that, that immediately gives the, the director and production designer a very um, quick understanding of where we're going to go with this image. Um, but you also can use it to detail and finalize stuff as well. I've used uh, Medium and VR to uh, finalize models before. Um, this is for the concept art side, I'll say. But uh, you can create low-res geo with a lot of this stuff, too. Uh, so you can really use it in all, all phases. I've, I've started and finished designs within VR. This looks like something straight out of like a Halo game. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm being uh, very ornate with it. Uh, I use a lot of different curves with uh, the geometry I play with. And, and one of the things I like is that um, using the kit bash pieces, you already have so many design elements thought of is that everything, every shape you're playing with when you're using uh, one of these kit patch pieces has already been thought out to a point where um, it already looks good. So really, uh, when, you, when you're using one of these kits, uh, your design will automatically have a, a good feeling to adjust uh, starting out because someone has already spent a ton of time like analyzing and finding out you know, what the best shapes would be for this. Mm. Second, there we go. I'm actually just going to change the lighting scenario. So just like we have in Gravity Sketch, if you guys have been watching Jama's awesome uh, video earlier, uh, there is a lighting scenario in Medium that you can play with. So I'm just moving my hand and basically changing where the light source is coming from. Um, so I'm going to make it so it's, it's a little bit easier to see this big structure right here. It's so sci-fi seeing you sit in a chair with a <laughs> You're right? <laughs> yeah. It's fun, too, because, like, just with the speed you can create stuff these days, um, you can kind of get lost in it. Like, I think the, the first time I tried VR, I got so absorbed in it that I didn't want to move for hours. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's crazy because you're, you're transported into the worlds you're creating. Um, so it, it just makes it so much easier and so much more fun to, to play around with designs. You really become like someone who can create a universe very, mm -hmm. in a very easy way. Mm. Yeah, it's so crazy to me with VR that that my brain doesn't know the difference. Yeah, you know, that I forget that this isn't reality, and when yeah. I look down at my hands, even though you can see that they're they're like yours are right there, um, it still feels like you're holding a, a spray paint can or an airbrush. Yeah, pen. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's good. the first time I, I ever tried VR was actually at Nikayev's place, and um, we were using uh, what is it, tilt brush? Uh -huh. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, and I put the headset on, and I must have been there for like four hours just playing <laughs> with Tilt Brush. I got so lost in it. And I remember taking the headset off and being like, am I in the real world right now? <laughs> or do I yeah. still have the headset on? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's such a, a mind twist. Um, how do you feel about, I mean, if you're doing this for work during the day, um, have you felt like you've, you've gained uh, an ability to stay in VR late, longer? Or Absolutely, yeah. Like a, a lot of people that I show VR to, uh, well, there's some, you know, not a lot, a lot. I, I would say in a workshop of 10 people, usually one or two will feel some, like, say, dizziness or queasiness after being in there for, say, an hour. But I think it's really just your brain adjusting to having so many realistic sensibilities uh, close to it with, without it actually being reality. Uh, and I absolutely got used to it. I would say after, you know, maybe uh, four or five sessions, four or five one-hour sessions. I, I still recommend taking a break from it, say, you know, once every couple hours for sure. But just, but you, you get used to it for sure. Like, I, I'm never, I never get nauseous. I never get queasy. I never have any sort of motion sickness at this point. Mm, yeah. Amazing. 
This is so cool looking. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy. You've been in it for 10 minutes. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I've, I've already got this crazy, you know, cityscape layout with a ton of little detail. You know, we can, we can really zoom in there and put the camera amongst all these little buildings. And I can, what, what I try to do as I'm designing this stuff is plan out what I want my shot to look like. So, uh, you know, we have the cityscape. I can very easily decide, oh, I want it to shoot uh, a camera view from this angle and, and do like a, a shot on this ridge here. Mm -hmm. Or I can decide, oh, I want to be amidst the cityscape or even do something looking down on the entire city from just above the citadel. Uh, so it becomes a very easy way to, to kind of plan your, your city layout as you're doing it. Mm. And, you know, like Jamal was showing, you could, you could have all those options. Absolutely. And what's just yeah. so cool about having your, your scene built in 3D is, is you're not limited to just one camera angle, but then you can move it. Yeah. Or if a director wants to jump in with, in, with you in this scene, would he be able to do that? Yes, absolutely. So if you have a, an, another Oculus controller, you can actually uh, join another sculpt session with like a friend of yours or, you know, if you're at work with other artists. Um, I have collaborated with other designers on the same project uh, in one file. At which the same is time. really cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can amazing. have you can have your art director say looking at uh, some geometry you're doing and saying, "Oh, uh, we would like you to change this and move this here," uh, which is if anybody has ever worked on production in the chat, you know how how valuable mm -hmm. that time can be, because usually when you're on a production, um, these people will not have much time to come like and sit down and explain to you what you need to change. Uh, but with the addition of these, these software packages, it becomes really, really fast to, to make changes within a production. Yeah, and is that, sorry, we just got a question on yeah. that. Is that yeah. live? That's, that's, you're doing online multiple people sculpting? Uh, so I can't, I, there's a company that has done that. I can't speak specifically to it yet because it's, it's uh, a beta feature. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do with Medium specifically is yes, you can, while you're live, you can jump in and sculpt. However, you cannot sculpt on the same thing yet. Uh, you can sculpt on two different files. You can be in the same room. You can have someone like point to different pieces on your model and say, hey, can we change this or change that? So you can be in the same chat room, absolutely. Gotcha. Um, but uh, yes, right now, uh, there's currently no uh, sculpting feedback on the same exact design. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, and that kind of collaboration is unprecedented. Yeah. Yeah. You've never, you've never before. I mean, imagine being being in two different countries, but being able to get in the same room and in the same project and be able to take notes in real time. Or having you know ten people from around the world being right. in the same place. That'd yeah. be crazy. Yeah. Someone, a ninja matic five thousand says massive multiplayer sculpting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be cool. It would absolutely be awesome. Looks like you just got asked out, Finn. <laughs> Alchemist oh, no. says, Finian, can we have a date in VR? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, <laughs> there are programs for that. <laughs> High competition. Well, in, in, in you're using uh, like a duplicator, a mirror tool. Yes, yeah, so the mirror tool in, in Medium, uh, it's very simple to find. It's right under the left panel. Uh, you have lathe, angle setup, grid snaps, tons of tools that'll make it easier for you to be more precise in the program. Mm -hmm. um, I like Mirror for when I'm doing cityscapes because it just it allows you to design the city in a very organic way. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see here when I'm well, I only really need to focus on the lines from one side because it'll duplicate to the other side, and you get a much more organic design because of it. And I I just I tend to design things more organically than than more um, I guess uh, tech specific or robotic. Um, but yeah, I think uh, you, you can also turn that off very easily. Like my plan for this scene before we're done is to take one area of it and flesh that out more and design a spaceship that will land there. Oh, um, yeah. Well, so th that was one thing I was thinking about too. How much of this is premeditated? How much of this is exploration? None of, I have not thought at all about the scene beforehand. Cool. <laughs> I, uh, when I was at home today, I did practice with the Utopia set but it was a completely different setting. I haven't done any sketches for this, you know. There, there are definitely things I will, will change. Uh, I plan to actually save the scene out and, and do a rendering it up for it and, uh, and paint over it. Oh, cool. um, but this is something where it's, it's very easy to make changes. So if there's any, ever, any pieces in this that I wanna change later on, 
uh, it's super, super simple for me to come back in here and just edit a few things. I think it's so funny watching your sketch process and knowing what your final images look like. Yeah, because they're not at all like this. Like, they're the end result for anybody who's watching, watching um, it will have like nice lighting, it'll have textures, it'll have, you know, paint on it, a ton of different stuff. Um, but the reality uh, of game and world design, uh, a lot of this stuff is created uh, in a way that's very, very quick for artists to, to iterate and change things. And a lot of those user interfaces are, are usually not rendered. So they're usually going to be grayscale or, or very low texture and low color. Uh, and that's so that your computer can focus the energy on placing uh, the elements in the scene rather than rendering it constantly. And then you can tell it when you want it to render afterwards. Yeah. I think it's amazing to watch you play with shape right now and be yeah. so, uh, see how, how you start from having no preconceived idea of what you're gonna build, figuring out your shape language and playing about with how this, what the layout of this city is. Yeah. And then, uh, and then knowing how you finish things and, and seeing like the, uh, seeing that this leads to the incredible paintings that you're known for. Oh, thanks, man. Um, and Droki threw in the uh, link to your Instagram too, if people. Want oh, to hey, want. thanks, thanks, Droki. I appreciate it. Yeah, if y'all if y'all aren't following Finn already, uh, be sure to do that. Hit him up. Yeah. So right now, um, I'm basically thinking, you know, when I'm designing a city, of. The first, the first part is how do people live here and why is it set up the way it is? Um, a lot of times when you're designing something, something large like a city for, for film or game, uh, you don't just think about uh, how it looks in terms of form, but you also need to think of it as, as, as a designer. So how do these people farm? Like what do they eat? Where do they sleep? Uh, where does their electricity or power come from? Um, so these are all things I, I try to consider when I'm, when I'm designing something like this. So you can see that as I've been doing this, there's multiple levels. You know, we have an underground section over here. And I was kind of thinking like this is more of an underpass where, you know, maybe people in the city are driving like hover cars or some sort of train systems. There'd be this underpass and then maybe like a median area here where all the, the main housing will be. And then on the outskirts will be like some luxurious, uh, very nice estates uh, mm -hmm. in whatever technology this is. But in the center will be uh, this huge statue that um, the council lives in of whatever the city is. And it could be, you know, a council that is devoted to like a god in their religion or something like that. I love, I love how story plays such a big part. And uh, even if it's a story that's kind of only exists in your head, it's, it's in the thought process of everything mm. that you're doing so that while we may not get the exact story if we don't if we don't know it, we know that there was thought put into every element that goes in here. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the things that pays off when a concept designer is making an image, even if there is no story that you can uh, immediately grasp, the fact that someone thinks about the story will have subconscious meanings that your brain will pick up upon that you may not uh, conscientiously notice. You might not notice it immediately, but the design uh, will make it apparent and it'll look more interesting to you because they thought about those things. We have, we have a couple questions in the chat about mm. um, kind of the, the kind of clay looking feel and like the blobby nature of some of this stuff. Yeah. Does that, does that distract you or does that, is, are you like, I'm okay with these being rough rough models oh, I'm because totally I know I'm okay. going to paint on top and I just want like a texture there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm totally okay with that. You know, I obviously if I were to zoom into this level, I'd need to start going over this some more. But uh, it's extremely easy to then just, first of all, detail these out if I wanted them to be more detailed. Let me uh, make a new layer really quick. Uh, in medium, basically, you control the resolution very easily. So you have an increased res and a decreased res button. And depending on how uh, you know high you want to go in resolution, uh, you can create something that's very detailed or uh, very low resolution. Now, as a concept designer, um, I paint over you know pretty much everything. There are some times where I export just plain 3D models, um, but most of the work I do is for the idea of the work and not necessarily all of the the details of it. So if I ever wanted, if I said, okay, I want to place a camera in this part of the city, then I would, I would start spending more time like I am now just figuring out uh, exactly where everything is. 
And in the end, you know, this is a sketch. It's not going to be something that is, you know, ready for production immediately. But the important thing is that I am getting uh, the full picture in mind. I can understand where I want the audience to look, where I, where all my design elements are. Um, and just from having that in place, it's already solving 90% of the issues. Um, you know, the rendering, the details, in the end, that is that is something that, to me, is not is, is kind of insignificant once you already have the idea established because rendering is in rendering means finishing an image for those in the chat um, because rendering is something that you can just achieve over a period of time whereas the idea could be something that is inspired could be something that you have while you're going to sleep at night uh, something that will will be fleeting will come and go mm. um, so that's why I try to block out you know these these main sections first even if they're a little bit blobby. It doesn't really phase me as long as I know where I'm going with the image in the end. Amazing. I think that helps so much to understand why this is such an essential piece yeah. of, of your process is how quickly you're able to explore an idea without getting bogged down into the details. For sure. That's absolutely true, Max. Yeah, because I think if um, if I were to focus so much on the, the details, say, of this one structure, and I spent the whole whole stream uh, designing this piece in the center, um, if, if I end up not liking that one piece, well, I've just wasted all that time. Uh, or maybe it doesn't fit into the cityscape in the end. Then, then that one piece, um, you know, I might have to, I might have wasted all my time. But if I think of the whole city as this, this huge organic hustling and bustling community that grows and ties into each other, well, then every every object I place will make sense because it's it's feeding off of the energy of everything around it. Uh, just like a normal city is, um, you want to design a city where it's, where it's always growing and evolving as you're sketching it. So that's what I try to think about when I'm doing something like this is, um, as you're designing everything as a whole, the more organic you make it, the more natural it will be because that's how cities uh, form and evolve in the first place. Mm. TP Phantom, or T Phantom 23 asks, how long did it take them to make this whole thing? It's been going for what twenty minutes? Yeah, not not too long. Thirty not minutes. Even. Yeah, it's, it's been nothing, and you already have this all built up. And someone asked, how how long does this generally take? Because they want to they want to see the the end of this. Um, well, tonight, you know, our, our show ends at, at ten, but we're doing a double feature here tonight with um, Nick Hyatt, who we saw earlier on the show started a block out, um, and then he's going to be finishing when um, when uh, we get finished with this section of what we're doing, but. Finn is here showing us how in VR he can do a block out um, really fast. So we've gotten to see two different ways of doing a block out, one with a uh, Wacom Cintiq and another here in VR. So we can get a, a look at some of the different tools that are available um, to you or to all digital artists out there that are, that are coming on today. Yeah, so you're going to have to check out some of Finian's finished work on his Instagram and his website, which... Uh, Droki just threw down the art station link for uh, for Finian's art station portfolio. <laughs> Thank you, Droki. That's very kind of you. Droki's <laughs> uh, uh, our head of 3D and uh, amazing artist as well, and always coming in to help us out here. Oh, I, I actually uh, haven't met him yet. Uh, nice to meet you, Droki. You, you will, I'm sure. <laughs> this is super cool. These kind of like sinewy, like mm -hmm. almost wire like uh, alien. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, oh, well, first of all, I just want to say, I wanted to add in there. Uh, guys, if you're, if you're checking this out, definitely stay for Nick's uh, design after this part. Nick has been a huge inspiration to me, and I've been following his stuff forever. Um, so make sure you check out what he's doing. Uh, and I was watching the block out beforehand, and uh, even though these may seem different, they're really similar in how we approach images and image design. Uh, we try to try to uh, fix as or solve as many problems as we can uh, with the block out, so that you're saving time in the end. Um, and that's one of the major things I'm trying to trying to do here is, if I was to uh, shoot a camera of the city from far away, I want to make sure that a every angle is solved. Every angle will will look good in the end. Um, so that's kind of what I'm tackling right now is designing the side of the building uh, to make it uh, seem interesting from all angles. Mm. Well, and, and if you all are just joining us, thank you very much for, for tuning in with us here for the Kibesh 3D Festival. 
Um, what we're doing here is we're looking at how digital art is made. Um, we're looking at a bunch of different tools that are newly available um, so for how you make art in movies or video games. Um, so on the show now, of course, we've got Finney McManus here who is in VR using Oculus Medium um, and uh, the Utopia kit from Kibesh 3D to build out a world that he can then very quickly um, block out and iterate a, a cityscape that he could then in, in other software um, push or refine uh, as he goes. And these are some of the tools and some of the workflows that Finian uses as he creates concepts and designs the worlds of things like Avatar 2, Jungle Cruise, uh, Solo, uh, Rogue One, and tons of other uh, films and games that you love and, uh, and that I'm obsessed with the worlds of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so guys, um, I use this process, you know, on a daily basis for, for all sorts of stuff. So uh, if there's anybody out, else uh, out there thinking, oh, this may be only applicable to a certain type of, you know, design or, you know, maybe you can only use it for certain concepts. No, it's, it's absolutely helpful for, for every phase, every type of design I've done. Um, and it saved me personally tons of time. And I, I think that the, the biggest comparison I make in terms of how it opens your mind as a designer uh, is that imagine um, when you're painting or drawing something or you know, you're doing a 3D model, you have in your head an idea, uh, but that idea is existing in a 3D space in your mind. You can kind of picture it from all angles. Now, when you put that on paper, you have to translate that into a 2D space. Uh, but if we're doing this in VR, we're already in a 3D space, so that idea uh, is something that you can just create instantly. Like I, if I have an idea for a structure and I can picture it in my head in all three dimensions, that makes uh, the VR process seamless because I already know what that structure looks like. I just need to you know, wiggle some tools around for long enough until I understand how it'll fit into my space. Um, so that's one of the, the great things is that the immersion in your design will allow you to design better. It'll allow you to uh, have more control over what you're doing and to understand your design process better as an artist. Amazing. So now you're working at the top of the Citadel. What do you, uh, are you, do you have any ideas for camera, camera angles on Yeah, this? so um, if, when I'm gonna do this, gonna design this out later, I definitely wanna do more of an establishing shot to start things off. I was thinking about sculpting a spaceship if we have time where I can kind of have it in the foreground traveling this, this way. And uh, the lighting, I think, will just be revealing the bottom part. Uh, and as we get closer, I wanted to focus in on, you know, some of the cityscapes here that we've defined a little bit earlier and maybe do some shots pulling in closer to this level. Um, and then I think towards the end, you know, maybe one of the last shots could be uh, a sky shot looking down at the whole, like, sprawling cityscape at the end. Because uh, I think it'd be cool to see everything, you know, as one piece. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking these uh, towers at the top could be... Uh, I haven't finished this idea yet in, this, in the piece, but they could actually be uh, different structures that different parts of the government live in, or at least work in. So maybe the, the middle structures or the middle fingers of the citadel uh, could be where the military resides. And then on the, the sides could be businessmen. Uh, and then you could have something like the stock market or something else in other towers here. Or I don't know, maybe they have like real estate investments. Maybe they, instead of using money or currency, they, they use time as their currency. So there's a lot of really fun things you can, you can play with as a concept designer that, are, that could normally be like crazy ideas in reality. Um, but you're able to, you know, have fun and really explore almost like you were a kid again uh, when, you're, when you're making your own worlds like this. Jokey says, I love how he already has a very clear rationale be behind the design moves he's making. <laughs> um, I do too. I, I love that that the story and the idea was what what is so, it's so cool to see that being sketched out. Mm. You know, it's not just that you're sketching out an image, but as you're creating this image, you're getting new ideas, and then those ideas are informing your design, which is then informing your ideas again. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you'll see... And I'm sure a lot of the people in the chat, because I know there's a lot of great designers out there, um, as you, you work on design more and more, a lot of the, uh, the, the decisions you make 
will inspire you to do completely different things later on in a piece. I, I'm sure Max, like you, you've encountered this a lot where like a, maybe a happy accident, a stroke you'll make on the side of the piece will, will look like something to you. And you're like, hey, maybe I can continue that and it'll become something greater in time and, and kind of inspire the rest of your concept for an image you're doing. Yeah, definitely. I always like when something like serendipity happens and something, exactly. something happens that's unexpected and then you're like, oh, this is gonna be a great moment of this painting or this environment. And then you end up flushing out that moment a lot more because <laughs> yeah. it just kind of excites you and you want to work Absolutely. on it and develop it more. Um, let's see what we got in the chat. Guys, if you guys have questions for Finian, drop them in the chat. And uh, we got a question from Nitzel. Uh, when or at what age did you first start exploring artwork? Uh, yeah, so uh, I started at a, at a fairly young age. Uh, my father is an architect and landscape designer and my mother is an arts journalist uh, so I had you know a family that was already pretty invested in the arts I was growing up I was very lucky for that um, and I, I would say I started drawing you know at an early age like six or seven but I wasn't you know serious obviously I, I was sketching you know things 2d and you know like apples and fruits and spaceships and uh, and I think it was as I got older into, you know, 14, 15, 16, that I really started to get more involved with doing like sci-fi images and, you know, spaceships and uh, cityscapes and interior designs, things like that. Um, so it was about when I was uh, 17 that I started uh, painting and drawing again, like actually, you know, instead of just doing it casually but actually focusing on, on getting better um and that's when i when i came out here and uh studied at uh, brainstorm school and art center college of design and that that helped me a lot for sure amazing we have a a, a a ton of questions in here um morpheus asks uh do you ever go back to your vr 3d models after you've started your paint over or when you're done here or you oh just that's interesting here? um if, if I need to, yes. There, there's been times where it's worth it. Uh, it's just that in, in I would only probably go over them again uh, if I know I have to render other shots that uh, will, it, it'll save time to go back and do the 3D model. Say like it's, if it's only one shot that I need to design, um, then it's, it's probably something I can just paint over in Photoshop. But if it's for a client where they want, you know, the full 360 view of everything being perfect, I'll definitely go back into the model. And it's not a pain, you know, you can keep your, your Oculus like right next to your desk and it's totally simple. Uh, it doesn't get in the way. So, you know, if that ever happens, I'll just step on it again and uh, just like jump right back in. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Mordrag asked, do you think this method of 3D modeling will replace ZBrush effect? No, 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 no. So, uh, you know, just like anything else, this is just a tool for, for artists to use. And ZBrush is, a, is an incredible tool that has had so many years of professionals developing it. I don't think it's going to be replaced at all. I just think this is an alternative. Like for me, um, it's faster for me to sketch in this than other programs. It may not be true for other artists. There's some artists that might try VR and be like, hey man, this isn't for me. And I know a lot of people like that. Uh, but for, for me specifically, it was something that changed the way I thought about design. Um, so I don't think that, that any other programs are gonna hit the dust because of VR. I think what's gonna happen is VR will make it, make it even better for artists to design, it'll be a tool that will push the industry forward rather than being something that eliminates. I think it'll create uh, more jobs for software development. I think it will uh, create more jobs for artists, and I, I don't think it is the the death of any program exactly. It's just a new frontier. Yeah, totally. Um, Crazy Mond says, "Hi, my main concern is secondary and tertiary details of your sculpt. Can mm. you use it for production purposes apart from concept art?" Uh, yes, uh, there are some games out there. Uh, I would not be able to recite them uh, completely, like offhand. But if you search. Um, there was, there's one game that was all assets were completely made in, in Oculus Medium. So you can search that. I believe they reposted to their page. Uh, but I know of many games that are using VR sculpting as a way to create game assets. So it's absolutely something that you can use. Um, the main reason why I haven't really developed the second and tertiary forms is that I'm trying to consider something on a larger scale right now. But 
I could like, you know, maybe we spend the, the rest of the stream detailing, you know, one of these structures, I can totally do that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something where you can always go back and detail things more. You're never really uh, locked into something. You can always increase the resolution. You can always add more detail if you want to. Uh, I still think that it's the best purpose for, for right now is a sketching tool. But they, all the VR companies are working on making this uh, as production ready as they possibly can. Seastorm says, I wonder if he's getting sick. No, I'm not I getting don't. sick. I am doing dandy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing great. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Morpheus asks, another question. Uh, can you talk a bit about the tools to achieve hard surface modeling with this? Yeah, absolutely. I do a hard surface in, in this a lot. So um, one of my favorite ways to approach hard surface design uh, is, I'll have to actually do this on a different um, sculpt layer. So say I'm designing, you know, a quick spaceship and I, you know, this could be extremely rough, but I'm just going to sketch out, you know, a little block in, let's see. So I'm going to elongate a form there and maybe drag this one up. You know, this is just going to be our very rough spaceship silhouette. So uh, I have the silhouette now. Um, if I want to start doing clean edges for hard surface, I would make the density of the mesh pretty high like this. And then I would come in with um, a brush to start removing pieces from it. So uh, with this, it's very similar to like a subtractive method where you'll see the cuts you're making and then you'll press down and shave off that piece. So sometimes you have to be a bit careful with it, but uh, I have a lot of hard surface designs on my portfolio that I've made uh, within medium. Uh, and uh, I believe they're also working on like a, uh, a, a masking tool, which you can use to mask certain parts out. Uh, but you can see the edges will be pretty, uh, pretty nice and fine. You have to be careful about different ridges occurring like that. Uh, but if you can just be a little bit careful about how hard you press it, you can absolutely do hard surface. And um, I've done a lot of different vehicle designs within this program that are, that are hard surface designs. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how minutely intuitive it is yeah absolutely like i said you can if anybody wants to pick up vr and try it out after you have the oculus it's it's very easy to to quickly pick up this program um and any other ones gravity sketch is a really awesome one too that i use on a daily basis drake Morak asks if you ever use a vibe uh you know i haven't actually uh i'd be totally down to try it sometime but oculus has been uh, the main force in my in my life as of, as of late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One one of the things I see happening a ton here in the chat that I just want to call out are people who are just jumping in um, are asking some questions that have already been answered, and people within the chat are answering them. Um, I think there's nothing cooler than that is that that there is a community here that is communicating with itself. And oh, oh if there's, yeah. You know, if there's anything more we can do to encourage that, you know, um, keep talking to one another, find find cool ways to to get to know one another, and collaborate, and do all sorts of cool. Yeah, Twitch was actually a platform that, um, I mean, I still heavily support the platform, but I, I used to stream on Twitch, and it was, it was actually a great help to me uh, seeing a bunch of ar other artists streaming on this platform and, and being able to help each other out. I've learned a lot of stuff off of Twitch's streaming. Um, so the fact of, of Twitch's community being there to help artists is really great. I'm, I'm a huge supporter of that. Yeah, it's super cool. Have you, uh, one, one question comes through here. Um, do, you, uh, do you find your, your arms get tired? Uh, actually, no, I'm okay right now. Uh, I know one guy, one amazing VR artist, Goro Fujita, uh, who will literally strap uh, 10 pound weights to his arm as he's uh, doing this. That's and amazing. it's he will get a workout from it. And you can put him on uh, your legs as well if you want to stand up and uh, play like Beat Saber. There's a bunch of fun like workout games that you can do. I haven't tried that yet, but um, it's, no, my, my legs are not tired right now. <laughs> I mean, my arms are not tired. It's, it's it, they're performing satisfactory. <laughs> and and you, you can do this all day long. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, you can see if there's a camera on me, I have my arms here. It's not like I'm like, right. you know, dancing about or anything. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, there are times, you know, when, when I'm at work, I definitely am standing, I would say most of the time, just for health reasons. You know, I like to stand while I work. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's something that is, you know, it's not that tiring, and if you are tired when you start, 
you absolutely get used to it because I can't remember ever like really being tired or if I was, then I, I quickly got over it and got used to it for sure. We got about five minutes left, then. So. What really? That yeah. fast? Yeah. Oh so my god. Anything you want to do, and and while you're oh, while you're man. scrambling, I just want to ask the chat one question. What do you think the chance of cabin is here? Let's hear it. <laughs> Put it in the chat. I want to know what do you think chance of cabin is here? For for any of y'all just tuning in with us, <laughs> um, this is the Kibash Lady Festival, which is going on in between the Bob Ross Marathon. Um, so Bob will be back on in half an hour. In between that, though, um, once we jump out of VR here with Finn, we're going to cruise back into um, the scene that we started earlier, the Red Dead Redemption tribute that uh, Nick Hyatt is here making with us. Uh, we have 15% chance of cabin, 29% chance of cabin. I got a 0.1% chance of cabin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Can I get a point two? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Finn, you know, I, we could watch you do this for for a very long time, and I'm it's it's incredible that we have been doing this now for thirty seven minutes, um, and this is this is how fast we've gotten to this space. And many of you in the audience are wondering why doesn't it look uh, more refined than this? The answer mm. is because we've been been doing it for thirty seven minutes. Yeah, we just uh, started this, but I will show you guys. Um, I'll come back and render this scene, and I'm sure the Kitbash guys can, can share it with you guys after it's rendered. This is actually a model that I would be happy to start rendering now, and I, I could show a, a pretty good painting, a finished painting with this model. Uh, so just in 40 minutes, you can get something which, which you're happy with and ready to go and uh, you know start doing concept work with. This Can we go full screen on, on what Finn just made? Because I think this is so friggin' cool. It looks like something straight out of a Halo game. You could totally see the Utopia vibes in this kind of giant citadel. Um, I, I, I would love to see what you do with this, and uh, and we would definitely post it at, at Kipash 3D on, on all of the social media channels. And also, Finn, where can people see more of your work? Where can they follow you? And where yeah, can they... so uh, you can follow me on uh, Instagram at fmacmanis, uh, or my art station is artstation.com slash fmacmanis. Um, so if you guys want to stay in touch with updates about this piece, I'll post the full process there. Super cool. Incredible. Is, is there time? If we, if we have a couple minutes left, could we show just a, a quick look at how you would do a render out of this? How you would kick out an image up from this? Oh, how I would. Yeah. Um, how, how would you set your frame? Or what, what, what frame would you like yeah, to set? Yes, so what I'll probably do for you guys uh, when I have this done is I'll absolutely do a frame uh, in, this, in this view where we're looking up at the cityscape from uh, the city itself. So that is for sure a guaranteed frame. Uh, I'll probably do another frame where we're at the tip top of the citadel looking down like this, uh, which will be super dynamic because we're, we're getting kind of a bird's eye perspective. Uh, and then maybe a, a very close up shot as well, maybe with some people walking on one of these streets. You know, something right in the middle of the city to, to give a good sense for the scale of it in the end. Super cool. So there, so there you have it. We have, um, you. We've got something to look forward to. We've done a. You, you made an incredible block out here, and uh, everyone, stay tuned on um, on Finn's Instagram, where you will see some of these kickouts. Um, Finn, if you want to, if you want to pop out of there, Absolutely. we can uh, we can say goodbye to you. Woo. Your, your pearly eyes there. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I mean, an incredible, in 40 minutes, what, what you were able to achieve there. Thanks. It's really insane. Thanks. It was super fun. Um, and yeah, thank you guys all for having me on. And uh, thanks, chat. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to hit me up. I'd always be happy to answer them. Yeah, take, take him up on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we're going to cut to a video real quick. And then when we come back, we're going to see Nick Hyatt finishing up his Red Dead Redemption 2 tribute. And, and uh, before we cut to that, I, wanted, I just want to preface what this video is. Um, so since this is our last uh, night of this festival, we want to show you all the video game that we made this year. Um, so this is the launch trailer of Sleep Tight, which is a game that we put out um, in July for Nintendo Switch and Steam. And coming to the EU and uh, around the world in uh, in early next year. So on a, in a, on on Switch, it's available internationally on Steam right now. Yeah. So ch check out check out this game trailer. We're gonna flip back over to uh, to Nick Hyatt, and you just might see a little bit more of him as Bob Ross too before we come back. <laughs> um, Mr. Finian, thank you very much, bud. Thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. See you in a second. <laughs> It was 
eight minutes before bedtime. I was fresh out of ammo and the monsters were closing in. I needed that last power up. Some nights, you just gotta be quick.